Next on UMass Sports Insider, it's a battle of the Bay State as the Minutemen hit the heights with an undefeated record. We get you set for the Saturday showdown at Boston College. Also, we check in with the basketball team as they visit one of the biggest county fairs in the nation. And we see how an All-American linebacker spent his summer days helping keep up the athletic facilities on campus. All work and no play. UMass Sports Insider, right now. Now, this is the UMass Sports Insider. Brought to you by Coca-Cola. UMass is undefeated on the gridiron following a hard-fought victory over Rhode Island last weekend in the home opener, while Boston College is still looking for its first win after falling at home to Duke last week. It all makes for quite an interesting matchup this Saturday in Chestnut Hill as the Minutemen take on the Eagles. Welcome inside the UMass football offices. I'm Josh Maurer, and in the show, we'll get you set with all the information you need as the 2-0 Minutemen get set to battle the 0-3 Boston College Eagles. So let's get right to it. Adidas presents the game. Time to check in with Coach Morris and see what his team has been doing this week to prepare for the matchup with the in-state rivals. Thank you, Josh. Hey, we're out here on a Tuesday morning, a little wet one this morning, but uh, practice is going very well. We're just finishing up here for the last couple blocks, but excited about Boston College heading out to the Heights. They've had uh, Montel Harris. They're all ACC leading rusher. I guess he'll be back in action. He's been out for the beginning of the season right now, and, and also the Ramsey, Caleb Ramsey, the D-line, and he's been out the last couple weeks. Big force on the inside for the defensive line. So it sounds like they're going to have everybody back and healthy, and with that, it's going to be a real quality football team. They're, they're off to a tough start at 0-3. Um, but now they're going to have all everybody back in the tank here going full swim. Perry McIntyre over here. Just there a quick hello, Perry, and uh, tell us a little bit about the Rhode Island game, and then we'll get into some Boston College. How'd Rhode Island do for you? Uh, it was a good game. You know, we just came out physical, you know, stopped the run, and, you know, react to the pass. But, you know, overall, we just played a good game and got the win. I tell you, stop the run is an understatement. Minus one yards at the half, 56 yards over the course of the game. That's a great job stopping the run by Perry. Perry, talk to me a little about Boston College, what you're expecting from them. A uh, hard physical team. You know, I know they're going to come out hungry. They definitely want to get a win, but you know, what I mean, we just got to do what we got to do and get a win. We need to be ready. We need to be fast, and we certainly need to be physical like we were last week against Rhode Island. So we're looking for a great, a great game up at the Heights. It's a great in-state rivalry game, and we're looking to come out on top, no question. But it's going to be a battle. Kickoff from Chestnut Hill comes at 1 o'clock on Saturday. You can watch it on ESPN3 with UMass Hall of Famer Rini and Golia providing the commentary. Or, of course, you can listen on the radio and internet on the UMass Sports Network. You might say he was born to be a quarterback. This Minuteman's father, Mike, played 12 NFL seasons at that position. And after transferring to UMass from Bowling Green last spring, this Minuteman signal caller has won the starting job and is hoping to keep bringing the Ws. With more, Big Y presents In the Bunker with Kellen Pagel. My name is Kellen Pagel. I'm a redshirt sophomore quarterback from Cleveland, Ohio. In the MAC, you know, guys can play football, and the same as the CAA. So I was really excited about this opportunity to come here and play, and I absolutely loved UMass and the guys around here. When I decided I was going to leave, you know, it was a really tough decision. I, re I respect everyone at Bowling Green, the coaching staff, the players, you know, and and I, I left. We all left on good terms, which was which was very important to me. And uh, yeah, I, I stay in touch with a lot of guys on the team, you know, see how they're doing, how the team's going, and everything like that. Tell them good luck, everything, you know, and. Uh, I just talked to him, and we, we joke a little bit if we get the chance to play, you know, that, that would be a really awesome opportunity. A lot of the, the MAC teams are, are in my home state, and so I'm, I'm excited for some of my family to come, come see me play, and as well as to get the opportunity to play against the guys that I did a little bit before. Back home, I said being from the Cleveland area, we get a lot of snow from uh, Lake Erie and the lake effect snow, so I would say we probably get more snow back in Ohio, but temperature-wise, it's, it's about identical in the winter. I think you get used to it to a certain extent. But you know, when you when you walk outside and all of a sudden the snow is just blowing every way in your face constantly, no matter which way you're walking. I mean, those those are the kind of days you, you wonder why you, you live up in the, the northeast and everything like that. But yeah, I think it's something you, you kind of grow up, and get used to, and everything. Growing up, I I watched my dad play, and, and I was a fan of his play. And uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of my game I, I modeled kind of to as as he was playing. So uh, I also have enjoyed watching Peyton Manning. I think he's a very special player. Peyton Manning has been one of my, my biggest idols. Thanks, Kellen. He'll be back under center as UMass takes on Boston College this Saturday up in Chestnut Hill. 
Tyler Holmes. He's one of the best players at the FCS level, one of the best defensive players in the country. This summer, though, we found him in a much different position off of the field. Ezra Broder explains. At 7 a.m., it's time to go to work. We do something different pretty much every day, you know. Today was, of course, setting out um, lacrosse goals. So tomorrow, you know, it's really a mystery to me. So I kind of like that. This summer, three student athletes worked for the UMass Athletic Facilities Department. Football's Tyler Holmes and Darren Thelen, and lacrosse's Tim McCormick. I wanted to stay up here for the summer, so I asked the coaches if they could um, help me out looking for a job. They recommended me here. Got to meet with uh, Dan Markowski, and um, the rest is history. Over the past years, there's been a, a bunch of football players worked here, like year in and year out. So we're trying to keep that going. It's a great job for uh, student athletes, so we hopefully it'll just keep coming in for all the football players. It's been great having the football guys here uh, working for us. When I was a student athlete here, I was able to work in the athletic facilities office. It's a great summer job, allows you to earn some money and then also, you know, work out after after uh, the day is over. A typical day for the guys starts at seven in the morning. Moving lacrosse goals, um, building the outfield for the softball team, uh, taking out trash, cutting grass, blowing off the tennis courts, power washing the tennis courts. It was a nice day out, out here, get, get a little tan on, just enjoy the weather. It was a nice day out, just like, like today, enjoy the sun, and you, you get all the work done. You know, definitely protect your shins from rocks hitting them, you know, that hurts a lot. Um, Kind of keeps the grass off you. I did a bad job of that today. It got kind of dirty. You get a lot of exercise too as well. Instead of being indoors all day, you get outside moving around doing things. The wooden goals out here, the little posts, we actually had to dig the holes for those, fill them in with dirt, and make sure they're sturdy enough to take on soccer ball. The guys say the manual labor they put in all summer long will pay off this season. It corresponds right to the field because they don't, you know, they don't take this job lightly. Everything we got to do, we, we do it to 100% and they make sure that they get it done and, you know, everything's done the right way. Getting up early every morning, you know, it's kind of got me in a set schedule, kind of, you know, get me ready for life, you know, the real world. Basically, you tell him what to do and he does it and no questions asked and just a tireless worker for us, just like he is on the field. For UMass Sports Insider, I'm Ezra Broder. Tyler and Darren Fellin are roommates. They are defensive leaders, and as you can see this past summer, they were co-workers. Thanks, guys, for sharing. We've got to take a break. We're stepping aside for the first time today, but don't go away. When we come back, we'll break down the home opening win with lots of highlights against Rhode Island. Stay tuned. Why, Shopee Big Why? How about our bigger, sweeter drinks? and our huge Superbird rotisserie chickens. We have a word for the other store's birds. Appetizers. Appetizers. <laughs> there are lots of fish departments in the sea. But ours is U.S. Grade A seafood. Right, pal? And we make your fish and chips to order. The biggest reason to shop here, we have the best sales week after week. Only the best for your family. From ours! The UMass Amherst Alumni Association is over 225,000 alumni strong. Our vibrant community participates in professional development programs, alumni clubs, athletic, and other events around the globe. Explore the traditions, resources, and opportunities that are your UMass Amherst Alumni Association. Get connected today. You are! You are! You are. Minutemen return to McGurk Stadium on Saturday night, October the 8th. They'll take on Central Connecticut State on band day.
watching the UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back now from a different part of the brand new UMass football offices. It's time for our weekly flashback and we go to the last time the men and men and the Eagles played in football, September 29th, 2007, a game in which both teams came in undefeated and it turned into quite a test for the homestanding Eagles. Matt Ryan, who was being touted for the Heisman Trophy at the time, led the Eagles to a 17-0 lead, but the Minutemen held tough, scoring 14 unanswered points and getting within three on a Liam Cohen touchdown pass to Jeremy Horn. Cohen would leave the game injured in the fourth quarter, however, and BC would hold on to win the game 24-14. UMass finished that season 10-3 and reached the NCAA quarterfinal round. UMass will try to make it a victory this time as they visit the Heights. They'll go in with a 2-0 record following last Saturday's home opening win against Rhode Island, one that featured an explosive fourth quarter and some really nifty looking new uniforms and helmets. Let's take a look back. It's instant replay. Just outside the two. Give it to Hernandez. He's got the corner. Touchdown. Just a guy with a great effort right there, Mike. Probst looking on the out pattern. Nearly, and it is picked off. Hand off again, Hernandez heading for the corner. Touchdown! Pagel. Touchdown! And as soon as I say that about Timmons, what do they do? Probst. Fakes it to Johnson, play action, has time, has a man, oh, it's picked off! Picked off in open field, Probst the only guy with half a shot, and he won't get there. Touchdown, Kurt Nels! Bagel, oh, good throw to Hernandez, breaks a clear, and breaks another tackle! Down the sideline, Hernandez out of bounds! five-yard line of Rhode Island, and that may be a backbreaker. Bagel is going to throw for it. Rolls into the end zone, looking, finding tally, touchdown. We're here today with our blue shirts from the Rhode Island game, and a great game it was, very physical battle. Let's talk to uh, some of the blue shirts here today. Tom Gilson, number three wide receiver. Tom, tell us a little bit about Rhode Island and your blue shirt. Um, you know, Rhode Island was a tough game. It was real physical. You know, I thought we played well. And me personally, you know, I thought I was real physical. You know, I had some big catches down the stretch. And uh, I just thought I played well the whole game. John Hernandez back in blue. Back to back. Here we go, John. Another great night for you. Talk to us a little bit about it. It was a great game. You know, we played um, all three phases, played well. Uh, a lot of young players stepped up. And um, uh, I ran tough, and that's my personal uh, effort right there. Hey, we got another MVP with us here from the Rhode Island game. With me now is Quentin Sales, offensive center. Great game by Quentin. Obviously, a 200 yards rushing and 200 yards plus passing. A great night for the offense overall. Has to start somewhere. Your hands on the ball every snap. Tell us a little bit about the Rhode Island game. Um, Rhode Island was a very physical game for everybody up front. Um, that's pretty much made the calls, and everybody did their job. Good preparation um, by the coaches this week. Coach Kucci, Ryan Gold, Coach Moore. So, you know, we had to get it done. You certainly didn't miss Kirkland on the field Saturday night against Rhode Island. Had an outstanding performance, an 80-yard touchdown return to put us in a lead late in the game. How exciting was that play for you? What were you thinking on the catch and the run? Um, actually, I couldn't have even gotten the catch if it wasn't for some of the linebackers like Perry and uh, D. Lyman, Brandon Potvin, getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Then getting the pressure on the quarterback, uh, he he was uh, able he wasn't able to throw a good pass, so. I was able to come under it and then get it and take it back to the, for, for the touchdown. Great job, Kirkland Elms, an outstanding night. You've now set the standard for what we expect for you every weekend, yes? Yes, sir. Taking a peek at some other UMass sports in action last week, the Red Hot women's soccer team was scoreless against Maine with only a couple minutes remaining when Swedish freshman Moa Matson hit this perfect long-range strike. Look at that, perfectly bending it in to give the men and women a 1-0 win and a 4-2-1 and record. Also, the men and women field hockey team had a big day last Sunday getting to play host to the defending national champion Maryland Terrapins at Garber Field. They gave the Terps a battle. This goal by Kate Heineman made it a one-goal game at halftime, but UMD would prevail ultimately. The final score was 4-1. to one. As you can see a few moments ago, there were some big plays from that football win against Rhode Island last Saturday, so it's time to break some down for you in the film room. It's time for Coach Chalk Talk. Let's go to Coach Morris. 
Thank you, Josh. Hey, over in the film room now, I want to take a look at some of the plays, those highlight plays from the Rhode Island game, a great win at McGurk Stadium in a beautiful night. So let's get some of those MVPs that we talked to earlier. Let's see them on tape and some live action. Let's start off here with the John Hernandez play. It's going to be unusual in the fact that John's not going to have the football. The play is this. We're actually going to fake the ball to John Hernandez, our tailback here. He's our blue shirt winner again. And then we're going to hand the ball coming around out here to the wide receiver, Jesse Joe Misty, who's going to take it down the sideline here. He's going to come through and actually not take the handoff, get banged up here because they're going to try to tackle him. He's going to escape that and just watch him accelerate down the field, and he'll end up blocking the safety going into the end zone. Just a tremendous hustle play. It's what we're all about here at UMass, and certainly personified by John Hernandez. Watch him here. Now here he comes. Watch him coming up the hash, all the way up on the safety, blocking the safety into the end zone. Let's go to the very next play where you actually get John Hernandez where you're used to seeing him with the football in his hand. So John does a great job blocking on the previous play. Great effort play, great mentality, and then he goes to business here with what he does best. He's carrying the rock, getting the ball in the end zone. Great finish by John Hernandez on the touchdown run. If you watch from the tight, we'll get some congratulations to our offensive line, tight ends. Hernandez does the rest. Great speed and acceleration. Great touchdown. So here we are, if you look at the scoreboard, 750 left in the ball game, and this is going to be the highlight play of the game, and it's going to be Kirkland Elms. Kirkland's up top here, playing the cornerback position in a soft, soft pedal out. He's going to pedal out here. The patterns they're going to run is going to take this guy in sharp and bring him back out and then take this guy in deep, try to get rid of Kirkland and bring him back over the top. Kirkland's going to play off this top deep ball and come back down and the ball's going to come right to him. We're going to get great pressure up front here. Kirkland up top, keep your eye on play action pass. Here's the in and out roots. There's the interception by Kirkland. Let's watch him. Good break on the ball by Kirkland and then watch him go. Look at the good hustle downfield. That's Galen Clements, defensive line. Look at him run down the field, getting a block on to spring it. And Kirkland does the worst by himself. What a great play by Kirkland Elms. Here comes number 44, Perry McIntyre. Galen Clements coming to follow it up, but it's McIntyre who gets the hurry on the quarterback. You see him throw it off his back leg. He doesn't want to get hit. Perry, great job running through the quarterback, and there's Kirkland from the tight angle, taking it all the way back. Great hustle down the field again by Galen Clemens and Kirk and great finish for the big touchdown to give us the victory. Thanks, Coach. We're stepping aside now. When we come back, we turn our attention to basketball and we'll see what the Minutemen Hoopsters were doing visiting one of the biggest county fairs in the nation. That's right, UMass Hoops and the Big E when we come back. Six point nine is a breakthrough. This the lightest ever. Why shop at Big Y? Because we stand behind our quality. Literally. <laughs> because my beef is all natural Angus from the USA. My strawberries are all Driscoll's. And I grind our beef fresh all day long. We have the best sales week after week. And everything's guaranteed fresh. Fresh. Fresh as one of these. Only the best for your family. From ours. You are, you are, you are. UMass Amherst Alumni Association provides resources for alumni and students. Like campers, student traditions, and athletic events. Make connections at social, professional, and cultural alumni events across the country. You are, you are, you are. I remember it wasn't quite this congested when I used to come here some years ago. We're talking about from 70 to 74. And it's nice to see how the program has grown. It's nice to see how the football program has really progressed, the successes that they've had, and obviously moving on to 1AA. Um, and so what, from 1AA to 1A, I mean, it's, it's really it speaks to this, the growth of UMass sports. And uh, obviously I have some fond memories when I, when I, you know, in returning and seeing how the place has grown a lot. and. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just glad to be back. I'm excited for the players and the coaches because they're getting a tremendous amount of support. Uh, it's, a, it's a lovely afternoon, but again, 
it's just an indication of the growth that's happening here at UMass. Not only from an athletic standpoint, but academically, the the, the school is is on great in, on great terms that way. So I mean, you know, UMass is a great place to go, athletically, academically, and socially. That was filmed with the UMass Hall of Famer just last Saturday before the football game, and he says he's excited about the team's move to the bowl subdivision. And we're kind of hoping that even though he has all those Boston College ties from being a coach over the years, maybe Al Skinner will be rooting for the Minutemen when the teams collide this week. Well, sticking with the basketball theme, the Minutemen were hanging out at the Eastern States Exposition last weekend. It's better known as the Big E. It serves as the de facto state fair for all of New England. Let's see what the Minutemen hoopsters were up to there. As UMass Catering presents Serving the Community. I don't think anything uh, like this has ever been proposed here at the Big E and uh, it's nice where they can come in, let the kids unwind for a little while, spend some time with uh, the kids on the team and really uh, get indoctrinated to UMass basketball. Meet and greet with the Minutemen uh, in front of the Mass building and it's, it's been great because the people have really come out to support the team, spend some time with the guys and, and really get uh, an opportunity to meet the kids. We're just out here, you know, playing with the kids, showing them little drills, you know, put them through layup drills and dribbling drills, letting them shoot a little bit. It's, it's a good time to come out to a fair, I've been to a fair in a long time, so it's a good time. It's my first time ever coming here. It looks pretty big. I'm going to walk around soon and check it out. I've come every year and spent time with the Mass Day, and it's fun trying to get uh, Max and uh, Nicole out here so they can uh, have the same feeling we had as kids growing up in the area. Um, you know, the, over a million people come through over a, a three-week period, and it's just great to see people having a nice time and uh, kind of a safe, happy environment where people can put some things uh, behind them. He's a pretty big name out here, so you know, for them to see him also helps as well. They definitely want to be drawn to him. This is his community. He grew up here. He's a native of this area, and he wants and he loves UMass. I think I probably came up here twice, maybe. And I came once my freshman year, actually, up at UMass. Coming to the Big East, especially with people all through uh, New England coming, I mean, you know, it draws our name to them more so, so they can see us. Hey y'all, this is UMass kicker Brandon Yelovic. That Big E certainly looked really cool. I wish we could have had that back in Texas. All right, now we're gonna take it off to a commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna go to our lighter side. Minutemen return to McGurk Stadium on Saturday night, October the 8th. They'll take on Central Connecticut State on band day. Sports Insider. Welcome back to the UMass football offices. At the end of the show, we like to go a little off the beaten path with some of our UMass athletes. This week, we asked some of them to take an introspective look and tell us how they would describe themselves in three words or less. Let's check out and see what they said. It's our Hookie Lao lighter side. I'm going to have to say uh, respectful. Respectful guy. You know. Respectful guy. The eldest women, you know, this is me. Awesome, awesome, and awesome. So, that's just, no, um, probably outgoing, um, spastic at times, and um, talkative. I'll go with uh, the funny, funny. I'll go with that. The funny, funny? Nah, just the funny, the funny man. The funny man. Really good looking. One more time, let's see that eye wink, or that, that eyebrow thing. That? Yeah. That right there? Yeah. Really good looking. Really good looking. Oh my god. 
<laughs> Those are the three words. Oh my god. <laughs> three words to describe. When you look at me, you just say, Oh my god. Uh, I'm about to say smart. Smart guy. Yeah, so you got respectful and smart. Okay, why spastic? I don't know. Sometimes, you know, you just. I just get like tons of energy and I just can just do random things and people are just like, You probably shouldn't do that. Like, I just don't hold back. I just do it. So people just look at me kind of weird. But I, I couldn't tell. Uh, yeah. You got a lot of jokes? I got too many jokes. Too many jokes. Uh, do, your go, teammate, do your teammates say you're funny? Uh, a lot of my teammates think I'm the funny man, you know. Make, make, I like to make people laugh every day, you know. Put a smile on their face. Do you have a reputation for being pretty, uh, pretty modest about uh, things on your team? I'd say so, yeah. Really? I'm a pretty modest guy. Yeah, 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 no. I'd say I'm pretty modest. But really good looking. But really good looking, yes, exactly. So how does that describe yourself, though? You know, it's just, you know, once again, I'm just a unique individual, you know what I'm saying? You, know, you just never know what you're getting. Oh, my God. You got one more word. All right. Is Will dressed as two words or just one? Is that we'll allow it. It's hyphenated. Well dressed. I'm going to go well dressed. Respectful, smart, well dressed. Yeah, that's me. If I asked your mother, is that what she'd say? Yeah, everybody. Everybody around the board is what they say. That was very introspective. Yeah. Yeah. So. You talk about yourself a lot. Yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm awesome, so it's, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Tell us a joke. Why did the girl put uh, sugar under a pillow when she went to sleep? I don't know why. So she got sweet dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give that a B. All right, uh, that's a good B. Uh, that was on. That was through the on the run. On the run. I got a question. Do you get that on the football field? Someone yeah. guarding you says, "Oh my God." I get that on the football field a lot. Get that on the football field a lot. Jump ball. Oh my God. Can't believe he caught that. Wide receiver. Give me a well-dressed example. What you mean? What I wear? Yeah, come on, show me what I, we gotta know why you're well dressed. If that's what you say. Bragger, I'm not a bragger. What do you wear? It's a little, you know, it's a little, huh, huh, a little something. Huh, huh. It's a little, you know, what I do. Don't, don't throw name brands like that. It's not me. Thanks, everybody. And hey, I've got three words for you. We're almost done. But before we go, let's take a look at the week ahead and see what's coming up for some of our UMass teams. Saturday at 1 p.m., it's the 2-0 Minutemen versus the 0-3 BC Eagles in Chestnut Hill. Don't forget, you can watch the game on ESPN3 as UMass tries to win its third straight to start the season. Also this week, both the men's and women's soccer teams head north to New Hampshire. They'll each take on the Dartmouth Big Green. The men Saturday at 7, and then the women on Tuesday at 7. And the defending Atlantic 10 champion field hockey team continues its punishing non-conference schedule. They'll head to UConn next Wednesday night to battle the fourth-ranked Huskies. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you have a great weekend. Don't forget, 1 o'clock on Saturday, the big matchup between the Bay State rivals, UMass and Boston College. Until next week, I'm Josh Maurer. We'll see you then. The UMass Sports Insider. Brought to you by Coca-Cola. Big Y World Class Markets. Adidas. UMass Catering, the UMass Alumni Association.